Hi there, welcome to a video tutorial on domain and range. This is the second video I've done in a series of videos on introduction to functions. This video will show you how to communicate the domain and range for a given function. So if you are not familiar with the term function, I highly suggest pausing this video, hopping over to my other tutorial video on an introduction of, to functions. Uh, just kind of learn the vocabulary and then come back and watch the rest of this one. Okay, so just a quick review of functions. Uh, grossly oversimplifying, a function is essentially an input-output mechanism. So picture, I, I take an x value, I jam it into my function, and a bunch of stuff happens, uh, and then the machine spits out a y value. That's essentially oversimplifying what a function is. So now if you understand what a function is, we can start talking about the domain and range for a function. So domain, uh, sort of textbook definition, is the set of x values for which a function is defined. So that doesn't really tell you too much, but if you picture our, our machine analogy, the set of x values for which a function is defined, that's the x values that I can put into my function. So if, if you picture this machine and this hole in this machine, uh, if, this, if this was circular shaped, I could not take squares and put it into my machine. Okay, so squares would not be in the domain of, of this function. All right, so likewise, range, this is the set of y values for which a function is defined. So back to our machine analogy, these are the things that can come out of the machine. So if my machine is, is programmed to create triangles, you will not see squares pop out of this machine. Only triangles will be in the range of this, of this function. Okay, sort of just a little analogy to help you understand these terms. They'll become clear in, 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 as the video progresses and, and we look at some examples. Before we get uh, into the examples, I just want to quickly talk about the real number system. So the real number system pretty much is just all real numbers. So any number you can think of uh, with the exception of imaginary numbers, which we're not going to cover in this video. Uh, we use the symbol R to represent the real number system, and we're going to use this uh, in, the, in the next couple examples. Okay, so here we go. State the domain and range for the following functions. So first of all, if I was to graph this set of points uh, on, a, on a grid, sort of like we did in the last video, uh, and check, you would see that this is a function. It passes the vertical line test. Every x value corresponds to only one y value. Uh, so it's definitely a function. So let's look at the domain. So remember the definition of domain, the set of x values for which a function is defined. So for this function, I have a, a specific number of x values. You can see I've got five x values here. So my domain ends up just being my x values. So all of these x values, what I'm going to do is just write them in a list. You can see I've only got four here. And the reason for that is that I've got two fives. So I've got a five here and a five here. So what this says is the domain is this set of numbers. These squiggly brackets tell you that this is a set. So I've arranged them in uh, numerical order from smallest to greatest, including my negatives. Uh, these are the x values for which this function is defined. These are the only x values that can go into this function. So the range sort of answers the question of, well, what happens when you put those x values into the function? Well, when I put these in, I get a specific number of, or some specific y values out. So I've just arranged those in order, again, from least to greatest. Uh, that's my range. So my range is the y values that can possibly come out of this function. Okay, so that's just one quick example. Let's look at some graphs. Uh, it, it will get easier to identify domain and range uh, as, you, as you start looking at graphs. I find it a little bit easier. But let's talk about this, this example here. So this is a parabola. So you're, this would be like an, an equation that you could represent using y equals x squared with some sort of horizontal and vertical shift. So the domain for this parabola, let's think about the x values that I could substitute in to an equation with an x squared, for instance. So let's just pretend that this function, obviously this is not the actual function uh, that this graph represents, uh, but let's just pretend that I had f at x equals x squared, okay? Let's think about the possible x values that I could substitute into this function, square, and then get y values out, okay? So you remember that this parabola goes on forever in both directions. Right, so there's always going to be an x value on the x-axis that I can substitute in to this function and get a y value out, right? So for instance, two, if I substitute two into my equation, some stuff happens, 
and you can see I get four out, right? Remember, this isn't the actual equation. There would be some other stuff at the end of this, uh, after this x squared term. But essentially, the concept here is that I can sub in any x value and get a y value out. And this would go on forever and ever in both directions. I could sub in a thousand, square it, and I'll get a y value out. So the way that we explain this is we say that the domain is any real number, and that's where we come back to this, this R symbol. Okay, so we say that the domain is any real number. And the way that we write that, of course, we've got a way of overcomplicating it with math. We write it in this way. So what this says in English is the set, that's these squiggly brackets, the set of all x values, this line here, this vertical line, refers to the, the, the term such that, that's such that in math language, x is an element of, e is in this, little, this little squiggly e symbol, means element of, which just means part of, the real number system. So that's what this says. When I see this as a mathematician, I read this and I say, okay, so the set of x values such that x is an element of the real numbers, that tells me all of the x values I can substitute into this, this uh, quadratic function. Okay, so now let's think, let's think about the range. If I substitute any x value into my function, what are the possible y values that could come out? Remember, this is like a machine. I'm substituting x's and I'm getting y's. Well, I know 100% I can get any number out. So I'm going to say my range is any y value such that y is, a no is an element of the real number system. But if you think about this, take a look at our graph. Is it possible, for instance, to get 1 as a y value? So let's look at 1 on, on, our, on our graph here. Our graph is not defined below this point here, which we call the vertex of our parabola. So it looks, based on the graph, this is this is three here, it looks like the lowest possible y value that we could get by substituting in an x would be three. So you've kind of got this like dead space down here where you can't access these y values. So we have to sort of account for that in our range. And the way that we do that is we say, yes, y can be any real number, but y has to be greater than or equal to, that's what this says, greater than or equal to three. In this case, it's three because you can see here our lowest possible y value is three. So we can get three and above, but we're not, we're not allowed to access the, the, the y values below three. So that's our domain and range for that parabola. Okay, so again, these, uh, this, this is sort of some new notation for you, but this is just math speak. Um, that, that just I, I've translated into English for you here. Uh, so you can kind of read this on your own and just kind of compare it to the notation. Just get familiar with, with using that notation in your studies. All right, so another quick example here. Um, based on our last video lesson uh, and, and our study and our, our discussion about the vertical line test, you, you'll recall that we can pass a vertical line through a relation and see if it's a function. Remember, if there are two points uh, sorry, if there's more than one point on that vertical line at any point as you move your vertical line, the relation is not considered a function. So this is not a function, but we can still describe the domain of this function. So let's think about the x values that I can possibly substitute into this, this relation. Okay, so looking at the graph, you can see that this thing's definitely defined in between negative five, right? This is, this is negative five right here. This is positive five. There are definitely x values. The, fun, the relations definitely de defined between negative five and five on the x-axis. You can see the same thing occurs on the y-axis. I've definitely got stuff happening between negative five and five. So my goal is to somehow communicate that using this domain and range notation. So I'm gonna start by saying 100% the set of x values such that x is an element of the real number system, right? We definitely have real numbers here. That's all this says. But we have to specify some conditions. So let's think about the, the, the domain here. Let's think about the possible x values. Is it possible for me to substitute in negative 6? Well, if I substitute in negative 6, that's outside of my boundaries on x. Likewise, if I substitute in positive 6, that's outside the boundaries on my x. So I've got to specify that in my domain uh, in, in my notation here. So I do that by saying that x has to be between negative 5 and 5. That's what this says. 
negative 5 is less than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to 5. So x is in between negative 5 and 5. That's what this says. So let's talk about the range. Same thing. It's not possible for me to get y values outside of negative 5 and positive 5. So my range is going to look very similar. I'm going to say my range is the set of all y values such that y is an element of the real number system, but negative 5 and 5 are my, are my bounds on y. So all y values in between are good, but nothing outside. Okay, so that's really just a, a quick brief introduction to domain and range. Uh, I'm hoping that you're, you know, by the end of watching this video, you're, you're, more, you're more familiar with those terms. This is definitely one of the most complicated things for uh, new students in studying functions. Uh, and, you know, if you don't work hard at it right away, you kind of develop these misconceptions moving forward and it can get really dangerous for you in your studies. So feel free to rewind that video, pause it, take some notes, uh, rewatch it. Uh, and I'm hoping that it helps you as you move on into your studies of functions. Great. Thanks for watching.